Hello everybody, welcome to the Comic Air Movie Show. My name is Deshaun and today I am here to review the Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania official trailer. Now we've known Ant-Man and the Wasp is the start of Phase 5. For a little bit now, Ant-Man and the Wasp was announced to be the start of Phase 5 couple back back at, not even D23, at Comic-Con when they kind of rearranged things. Because for quite a while, we didn't really know where Phase 5 in where Phase 4 actually ended. We just knew where it started. We didn't actually know where it ended. Now we know that Phase 5 is technically going to end with Black Panther. Well, actually, I suppose it's not going to I suppose it's going to end with Secret Wars. Because Secret Wars is probably going to, I mean, Secret Invasion is probably going to come out before that. But I digress. Phase 4 is going to end with Black Panther. Which Black Panther are all with, you know, the trailers and everything. is pretty much aiming to that movie being spectacular can't wait for that movie got only a couple more weeks to go but um phase five will be beginning with quantum mania and the ant-man franchise to me has always been one of my favorites like i don't like i don't think it's better than the captain america or even the spider-man franchise like to me the rankings of the franchises like the multi-movie um um films it's captain america at the top spider-man right behind that um, and then it's the Ant-Man movies. It's the and then it's the Ant-Man movies, Guardians of the Galaxy, Doc Doctor Strange. And I know that sounds kind of weird. Like you think Thor would be in there, but I think Thor Ragnarok and Thor: Love and Thunder are better or are, are better than the first two Thors. So I think in terms of leveling, it's to me. You know, I I, I I enjoy I enjoy the Ant-Man franchise so much. Like I say, it's only behind the Spider-Man and Captain America franchises to me in terms of consistency between the films. Even on Rotten Tomatoes and rating sites, the two films are right there eight in the mid-80s. So I've always had fun. Paul Rudd is an amazing actor. I love that guy and whatever he does. Um, the timeless wonder, the vampire himself. Um, Paul Rudd's always amazing, and it was so great when he we got cast as Ant-Man. Um, obviously, Evangeline Lilly, when she's not saying stupid shit, is a great a wasp. Then you got the legendary Michael Douglas to come in and play Hank Pym, which is just crazy. Like, between getting Michael Douglas and getting Robert Redford and getting freaking, um, Anthony Hopkins, some actors like that just give so much credence to the MCU. They they give it a legitimacy. They really do. Like, and when you got freaking, you know, when you, when you got freaking um, when you got someone of that caliber to play Hank Pym, Michael Douglas. It just elevated. It just elevated the entire film to another level. And I love Michael Douglas's Hank Pym. He's a very ferocious dude. And then you get Michelle Pfeiffer to play Evangeline Lilly. I mean, not Evangeline Lilly. <laughs> <laughs> to play the original Wasp, um, Janet Van Dyme, it's just like, yo, this is like, you got two legends to play the OG Ant-Man and the Wasp. And while I, and Ant-Man and the Wasp isn't as good as the first Ant-Man, but it's not that far behind. It has some of the most funniest jokes ever. I remember me and Seth just dying with the whole him getting stuck in like medium mode where he was just like moving in his little legs and like there are some gat there are some jokes in that movie that are hilarious and I love what they did with the shrinking technology it was great seeing the wasp it was great like I dug Ant Man and the Wasp it's a nice movie it's a really good movie very funny not as funny as the first one not as original as the first one but still a really fun movie so I was looking forward to the Ant Man and like I remember after Endgame. There was no guarantee that they were going to get a third Ant-Man. Like, a lot of people didn't know that was going to happen. Some people said Ant-Man had served his purpose. And that now there's no reason to do another Ant-Man movie. But, you know, Quantumania gets announced. They announced that they've changed out the um, actress for playing Cassie. Because if you remember at the end of Endgame, there's a five-year skip. And Cassie's about, I'd say, 12? 12 12-ish, maybe? Maybe 13? I don't know. I'd say 12 at the end of Ant-Man and the Wasp. So it's a five-year skip from that. So she's like 17. She's like 17, 18 when he comes but sees her. And this movie probably takes place uh, maybe a year or two after those events. So Cassie's like 19 years old now. She's probably like in going about to go off. She's probably off the she's probably going off to college and shit. And they changed her out with an actress that I've seen before. Um, something Newton. I can't remember her first name, but I, I've seen her. She was in that movie, um, was it, was it Freaky? Um, that movie where she switched, where, um, with Vince Vaughn, where they switched places or whatever, and I heard she was great in that. 
I obviously, the first time I saw this actress, the new actress they play in Cassie, was in the show Supernatural. And I loved her in that. So, I'm happy. You know, she's clearly shown that she can handle, like, they, clearly, they didn't want to, um, the actress they did have play Cassie, they just, they didn't have faith that she could be a star one day. They, they, they wanted to go with someone with a rising star. And that, and that's what Marvel's doing right now. Like, you can tell they're going for rising stars. Soon as they got Florence Pugh and um, Haley Steinfeld, and I was like, oh, you guys are, I see you guys are going for rising stars. You guys are looking out there like, who's on the come up? What young talent is on the come up? So we can get them attached to something pronto. But, so I'm happy with the recasting. But the bulk of the trailer, while we don't get a lot, the bulk of the trailer, at least from what I feel, is that Scott Lang has become a big time celebrity. If you watch him as Marvel, you know he is, because apparently he has a massive podcast where he is doing very well for himself. And apparently, he is the source of all the world's information on the fights and events that have happened in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, or a lot of the big ones, anyways. But I digress. He's successful. People know who he is. People respect him. People see who, you know, like I said, they see who he is. They they, they react to him. I mean, he's going to red carpets. He, <laughs> the bad, he goes back to Baskin Robbins and is pronounced the greatest Baskin Robbins employee who ever lived, which I wonder if they're going to mention the fact that they fired him on the day of. The day he got hired, they fired him. I wonder are they going to mention that little tidbit. But yeah, <laughs> uh, that, that's pretty funny. They even got the actor to come back. That, that That's that's funny. That's funny. The Bassy Robin bit in the first Ant-Man was hilarious anyway. So, so, of course, this is funny. But, so, like, he's living a pretty good life, man. He's living a good life, you know. Going to premieres, got a couple books out from what I've heard in other in, in the trailer that they showed at D23. He's living the good life. And Cassie, clearly messing with shit she probably shouldn't be messing with, communicating. It's like one of those, it's like, you see, this is something you've seen before in movies. You know, where somebody's contacting, trying to, trying to find life out in the universe and Oh, we contacted someone. Then the aliens show up and start fucking the place up. It's like, why did you contact them? Same thing kind of happens here. Because for one reason or another, the device that Cassie designed to communicate with the quantum realm sucks all of them in. It sucks Cassie, her dad, um, Hope, Janet, and Hank just into the quantum realm. And it seems like the bulk of the movie is going to take place in the quantum realm. Because a lot of people ask the question, why isn't Luis and the crew going to be in this? And I thought the same thing. I was like, dude, it doesn't make any sense why they wouldn't be here. But if but if they get stuck in the quantum realm, and that's the majority of the movie, say they say that the first 15 minutes is, like, the first 15 minutes of the movie, they're out of it. But the rest, like, the first, the last, but the rest of it, like, the last, like, hour and 40, 35 minutes of the movie is in the quantum realm, then it makes sense why they didn't bring back Michael Pena and whatnot to be in this, even though I'm going to miss him, love his stories. Maybe he'll show up in the end and surprise us and be like, whoa, where have you been? But it makes sense why he wouldn't be here because they're in the quantum realm. Um, We get some awesome shots of Kang the Conqueror, dude. Awesome shots of Kang the Conqueror. But I'll get to that later because between Black, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever and this trailer, the CGI is a Astounding. It caught me off guard, which I shouldn't have. I mean, it's Marvel, but like, it looks amazing. Like, really, it looks like a combination of Loki and Guardians, you know, a little bit. It kind of has that Loki vibe to it with the, I mean, using the yellow brick, uh, you know, Beyond the Yellow Brick Road by Elton John also was a great chunk, chunk song choice, but it has an interesting vibe to it. Like I said, it reminds me of Loki. It reminds me of, like, Loki with an even bigger budget. <laughs> like, was that world that we showed. And, like, they set this up in the older, in the other movie, in um, Ant-Man and the Wasp, that there might be another world inside of the quantum realm. And honestly, they do it. Like, honestly, you know, we find out, at least it seems like, how, how Janet survived being in the quantum realm for, like, what was it, 30 fucking years or some crazy shit like that? And, like, at the time when you watch Ant-Man and the Wasp, you kind of just roll with it, or maybe you didn't, but you kind of just roll with it and just go, well, maybe, I don't know, she was eating something down there, but you kind of, but, like, but like a lot of people, I even had to question that, like, yo, she would have went batshit crazy if she was down there for 20 years by herself, even if she survived down there. We now we know how she survived down there and didn't lose her shit because it's an entire 
universe in the quantum realm. Now, the quantum realm, as far as we know, is really just like the in-between of other universes. You know, you can use the quantum realm to get anywhere in the multiverse. But it, but it itself is a universe, as it turns out. And now, it's hard to tell if Kane the Conqueror had been in here the entire time, or if it's one of those things where, after the events of Loki, he just he showed it, he started popping up here. Either way, Jonathan Majors, we get our first look of Jonathan Majors as Kane the Conqueror, and he looks amazing. It is more comic book accurate than I expected. But they just they, they, they did something really clever, which is instead of his skin being blue, his helmet, the classic Kane the Conqueror like helmet thing, it's like a full helmet, and it has blue lights inside of it that make his face look blue when he's wearing it. So when he's wearing the helmet, he looks like the classic blue-faced, like, green and purple guard, Kang the Conqueror, which is so freaking cool. But then he takes it off, and you get a good look at Jonathan Majors, and it seems like he, he, like, dude, I am so excited. Jonathan Majors, this is the year, man, or next year. Next year is the year, because he looked great in that Creed trailer. He looks great in this. I'm excited for Jonathan Majors. That guy is amazing. Lo he was amazing in Lovecraft Country. He, he's been amazing in anything I've seen him in. Most of the things I've ever seen that guy in, he is great. Great actor. Great actor. Fucking jacked as hell. <laughs> Scares me. But great guy. Um, but yeah, like, dude, and like, like, like I say, there's, I can make more, I'll probably make other videos about this trailer, just speculation, but the thing comes out in February, dude. That's not that far from now, man. That's, that's like four months, ain't it? Like, what is it? October right now? November? Yeah, bro, like, it is not that far from here, dude. Like, it's gonna be a short-ass window between Black Panther and fucking, and this, which is shocking that they put it so close. You'd think they'd have put it a little further away, but, hey, look, I'm not complaining, because I'm thinking we got two bangers coming our way with Black, with this. Oh, man, I am excited. I am excited. I gotta tell you, people, I'm fucking hyped. Anyways, I love the Quantum Manium tra trailer. Have you seen it? Comment below and let me know. Please remember to like, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.